and uh, we'll be reading from uh, that passage this morning. Just as a bit of a context to this verse, you'll see Proverbs 31, uh, verses 1. It uh, starts with these, uh, with this sort of, uh, these words. Uh, the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. Again, this uh, gives us indication as to the context of this text over here. Uh, this is a king of Israel, and his mom taught him the, the words that he holds dear and shares as part of this, this book of Proverbs over here. And it goes on in verse 2. What should I say, my son? Uh, what, son of my womb, son of my vows? And he goes on uh, and he describes uh, some advice his mother gave him about women drinking and about uh, living life in this world as a leader. But then in verse 10, he shifts gear quite dramatically and, and he speaks about in praise of a capable woman uh, or a virtuous woman, as some of your, your Bibles would say uh, over there. And, uh, and he goes on and says, Who can find a capable wife? She is far more precious than jewels. Some older translations will say rubies or precious stones. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. She selects wool and, and flax and, and works with willing hands. Again, reference to wool and flax indicates roughly a uh, date of about uh, 300 BC that, that they are referring to over here, where these products would have been well known as such. She selects wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. This is talking about the king's house, of course. This is the, the palace and has many servants, but it's dealing with principles here that we will look at this morning. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her own earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good, and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the, to the spinning staff, and her, her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all of her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates, where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and, and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. She opens up her mouth with wisdom, and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her whole household, and is never idle. Her sons rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor, and let her works praise her at the city gates. Just yesterday, my wife uh, dragged me to Walmart, or Macro rather, uh, to go and get some stuff over there. And you know the long line you waited to pay? On the left hand side, there's all of these magazines going down the left hand side. And chocolates and sweets, of course, that they want the kids to force their parents to buy uh, at the same time as well. And uh, what is just so interesting is all the, 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 the women's magazines. Now, there's probably two men's magazines that would appeal to people there, I'm guessing. A men's Health or a car magazine or Golf Digest. But the 30 other magazines there are all about women and family, right? But have you ever taken a moment to look at the covers of those magazines and, and just browse through on the cover some of the content of what these magazines are dealing with? It's quite frightening to find, look at these kinds of things uh, that are on our shelves today. And, and so we have this idea in our society, in our culture, of the superhuman, superwoman kind of woman out there that just does everything and is just absolutely incredible. And uh, the world has promoted this idea of this, this independent woman, uh, this woman who can have things her way and, and you know, will go at length to do all kinds of things, who, who never needs any help, who doesn't cry on anyone's shoulders, but this woman who's just, you know, almost indestructible as such. And of course, beautiful, and there's beauty products that you can buy, and they 
you need samples in the magazines, I gel so that your, your wrinkles don't affect you too much. Uh, and uh, all sorts of potions and lotions and stuff to, to make you look younger as such. But Problem City 1 starts off with this. Who can find a capable wife? She's far more precious, far more precious than rubies or precious stones as such. This, this verse over here describes for us, or this passage describes for us a, a, a picture of a virtuous woman. A woman that, that God looks at and says, well done. I appreciate what, what you are and who you are as such. But in our society, we celebrate women who, who seem to be what we call the desperate housewives of the series that we see uh, over here. There are people who get married once and twice, and divorced once, twice, or three times, um, have an affair or two here or there, say things they shouldn't say, uh, you know, don't really seem to care about anyone, you know, we take selfies of every second we can. Women that do their makeup in the car just to look extra beautiful, even though they spent about a half an hour at home already doing their makeup at home, perfecting their hair, all of these kinds of concepts. The, the world seems to more and more depict a standard of what womanhood is that stands very much against what the Word of God is as such. And so we need to be very cautious that, that you and I, as believers in Christ, have a, a good image of what a woman is and how wives are to be and behave in the life of the church, and certainly when it comes to their own homes as such. And so this morning, my Mother's Day gift to Laura is a very simple one and a beautiful one. It's simply this. I preach for short, and that's my gift to her. <laughs> and she was very happy with that. So, so still letting her hand right there. So I've got about five minutes left over here yeah, as such. No, friends, if you look through the Proverbs, it's, it's an amazing book. Words of wisdom. You know, there's a, a chapter of Proverbs every day of the month. And this chapter is so rich in terms of content, and, and this book just unpacks so much in terms of, of what women are and, and should be, and, and it warns us often uh, what, what to avoid when it comes to certain kinds of women. Now, when we get to Father's Day, we'll also look at problems for certain kind of men, okay? You can, men can be foolish, men can be hard-headed, but today is, is your day, ladies. So we're going to be chatting about you specifically over here. But this text gives us a few beautiful pictures, very briefly, of, of what a woman is and should be like. And the first image I see over here, we get in verse 11, is a woman should be faithful. Should be faithful. The heart of a husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything good. I think trust is the basis of every relationship that we go into, and certainly the relationship that a wife and a husband have to have is one of, of deep faith, trust, and commitment. And so we need to realize that faithfulness is the basis of our relationships and, and our marriages as such. There was a, a story told of a, of a pastor who went to visit an elderly couple and he took a visiting preacher along with him as well. They went to visit this couple because they weren't able to come to church and so they went along and had some communion with them and, uh, and uh, they were married for 62 years. And uh, what an incredible testimony that is, as such. But after communion, the visiting preacher said, How, what is it like to be married for 62 years? And he said, it's the most wonderful thing ever. We've been married for so long and it feels like we're still on our honeymoon. And I thought, wow, what an incredible testimony. Uh, we have this idea often in our marriages that you know, after the first year it's all downhill from there. Uh, and that's what the world promotes. And actually it's not. There are greater things to come. I'm excited every day that I wake up and I, and I see my wife and even more excited if she comes bearing a cup of coffee um, because that's, that's, I'm excited for the days that are yet to come and I'm excited to, to get to, well, maybe not 62 years, okay? I don't know how much I think my wife is going to have to put on to uh, for me to eat away your wife. It's not going to be, I think that's a big shot for that. Uh, but I can't wait, I can't wait to grow old. I can't wait to grow old with my wife and to enjoy, enjoy the benefits of, of what that brings for us. But ladies, faithfulness. Faithfulness is, is so important. I belong to a lot of social media groups and I'm on a lot of platforms and I hear a lot of things and see a lot of things that I sometimes deeply regret seeing. And uh, one was, was related to someone who actually used to attend this church and, and who went onto a Facebook group and, and led base to her husband. In, in a way that I thought was, was quite disgusting, to be quite honest with you. My husband is lazy, and he never looks after the kids, 
and just had this whole complaining session online about her husband. And I'm pretty sure her husband was oblivious to what was being said on Facebook. He's probably just still sleeping or something. I don't know. It might be true, but the things and the way it was said was in a way that, that demeaned him. And so we need to be cautious about, about how we live our lives, particularly as those who commit to Christ. Because our standard is no longer just the standard of the world. Our standard is a, a higher standard. And so we can't and shouldn't look to all those women magazines and Oprah. I don't even know what their names are, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay? I don't read them, clearly. Uh, we need to take our cue, not from those magazines, but from the Word of God that presents us. And, and this text over here almost is a precursor to what is to come in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and chapter 6, which describes again this relationship of a, a husband and his wife. And faithfulness is the basis of that relationship. Before I continue preaching, let's move on to the second point over here. The second point we, we get over here from uh, verses 13 to 19. Look at this incredible image we get of, of her entrepreneurial spirit. She selects wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. Uh, she's like merchant ships bringing food from far away. She evaluates her field. She, she buys it with her own. She plants a vineyard even with her, her own earnings over here. She sees that her profits are good and her lap never goes out. I think the, the modern day concept of the man must go out and earn a, a salary and the woman must be a kept woman at home uh, is, is, is not even a biblical concept. Uh, and, and I've seen very often how this can go wrong. When I went to gym a long time ago, I, I went and sometimes with discovery you just have to swipe your card, okay, to show that you were there. You don't have to do anything, you just swipe your card. So the one time I went there, maybe this was my punishment. I swiped the card and I thought, well, let me have a cup of coffee and ask some emails. <laughs> so I was action and I was doing emails. So that was work, but not a work out. So it doesn't count, I guess it. But uh, before long, there was a, a table next to me, about 12 women just descending on this table. And, uh, and again, just complaining about my husband this, my husband that, this, that. And, and I just was absolutely shocked at what they were saying about their husbands. And I texted Laura and I said, I hope you don't talk about me like this to your friends. I was shocked. I, was, I mean, I don't know what women talk about when they get together. I thought it was about to know which makeup to wear and which lipstick suits me. And I don't know what women talk about. I don't know. I was absolutely shocked and, and horrified. You see, these women don't work. They stay at home moms. Now, don't get me incorrectly. I'm not saying stay at home moms don't work, but, but they've got nannies at home and they Okay, got nail appointments and facials to go to later on. And the furthest thing from their mind is what's described in this text as being industrious and contributing to the, the house as such. And far too many marriages fail because I think the men are trying to work so hard and, and the women are, are not always giving their fair share when it comes to the household aspect. Now, don't hear me wrong in this. I'm not saying women must go out and find jobs and so forth. But what I am saying is that our role in the home is to work towards a supportive environment that reflects God himself. And, and part of the role of the woman in this text is not that she sits down and has her nails done and has all her beauty taken care of, uh, but that she is, plays an active role in her home, actively working towards the various things that she wants to see in her home. And so this woman over here, described in this text, who is going to be a, a woman married to a king, had to do exactly the same thing. His mother advised him and said, if you want the right kind of a woman, this is the woman you must have. Someone who is industrious. Someone who sees a piece of land and has a vision for it and says, man, we can plant something over there. Let, let's just go and do it. Someone who, who sees things happening and, and who contributes to the, the family and, and, and doesn't just sit back and, and do absolutely nothing. And so we need to fight against this desperate housewives, housewives kind of culture that pervades South African society by and large. And we must seek to not only be faithful, but to be industrious for the home. And that means we need to make our rank stretch. I'm thankful for my wife every time we go shopping. Because there's a, a shop with three words or three letters that she loves visiting. Pep. Pep. She loves Pep. The other woman loves Tassifords and loves Edgars and, and she loves Pep. And I say, thank you 
you, Jesus. My wife knows how to make the grand stretch. And if someone needs a meal and has dinner, we make the dinner stretch. I mean, that's, I'm so grateful for that. She never buys clothes, and when she does, she always goes for the sale. Why? Because she wants to make things stretch out. And sometimes, I've done it every once in a while, a lot of hours taking shopping. And uh, she knows, she buys me ice cream and bolts on, and I will walk a thousand miles away. Okay? <laughs> They're all good. Uh, and, uh, and I'll take her shopping and, and, and choose something that you want that's not on sale. Man, that's a whole day. That's a whole day out. Because that's the kind of woman she is. She contributes to the house. She evaluates things carefully. And sometimes when I want to buy something, even if it's for her or the kids or for myself or for the house, do we really need that? Is it something you want or is it something we really need? Now I see some of the women are, are smiling at church saying, oh, that's, that's a conversation we often happen to have in our house as well. And that's a good thing to be celebrated. It's a good quality to have in our woman and at home as such. Number three, compassionate and generous. Have a look at verse 20. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. We exist, friends, not only as the church, but as believers, not for the benefit of those who are saved, but primarily for those who are not yet saved. We exist to, to be a blessing to people, to be, be those who extend the grace that God has given us to other people. Now, I know that no one here has the perfect life, the perfect house, the perfect amount of money that you would have wanted to get in, and I suggest that you probably will never earn that, and you'll never have that, and you'll never get that, this side of heaven. But one of the, the beauties of a woman is her compassion. And as a man, sometimes I look at something and I'm just cold, clinical. And my wife will say, hold on, you need to look at this from a different perspective. Because there's a sense of compassion. Someone will come to me and say, this is the fifth time they've asked for this, and I'm so sick and tired of seeing their name on my phone, and I don't, I don't want to give them anything, and she'll come. Desmond, actually, you need to show grace and compassion and, and be kind. I remember there was a time in Botswana we were driving around looking for a parking in the parking lot. And in Botswana, they're first generation drivers, literally. Uh, they only had Todd Road after um, independence. And, uh, and so they would park everywhere in the parking lots, which would drive me nuts. So you try to find the parking and then you can't even get into the parking. And so eventually, after 20 minutes of driving around this parking, we found an open parking. And I was going for it, and I had my indicator on, that's important to know. And someone else came in front of me and parked in my parking. So now, okay, I'm not perfect. I, I just hit a high blood pressure, like from zero to a hundred immediately. And the first thing that happens is I hit the booter. Dude, as if that's going to do anything. So they get out of the car, they lock their car, and they look at me. And they wave at me. Oh, that's the worst thing you can do. I mean, now that you are, this is the worst thing that you can do. And my, my wife just gently put her hand on my hand. And I looked at her and she said, Imagine if they were to come to church tomorrow. <laughs> See you in the pulpit. What would they think? And then suddenly, okay, you're right, they can have a parking. We'll find another one. Jesus will give us a better pocket. Amen. <laughs> but Laura is like that. She's compassionate and, and very generous. And, and a woman needs to be like that. To be compassionate and, and generous, but not walkovers. And I think there's a real difference between those two things. And to let the compassionate part just show to other people. Dr. John Phillips says this, she's kind, compassionate, considerate to others, but she's not a soft touch. She does not reward idle behavior in others any more than she tolerates idle behavior in herself. That's the image we get over here in this text this morning. Number eight, we see that this woman that's described here is beautifully presentable. Beautifully presentable. I think in our society we've created a society that is very conscious of self. Perhaps too self-conscious. And I fought my daughter this week, Gabriella, in front of the mirror about five times, but I thought like her head is perfect, it's enough now. Uh, and so, 
and she wants her hair to be perfect because this one little piece is coming down here. She's got the hairspray, she's trying to get this up here. And I don't know, maybe I'm just a guy, but I mean, come on, just put some jelly in your hair or shave off and go for it. I mean, why do you have to bother with all of this stuff in front of the mirror half the time? And so I said to my daughter this morning, you know, I walked into a room and I looked and I said, hmm, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And she looked at me in horror and, and I think she got the point. Okay, enough is enough now. You look presentable. You look good. And so husbands, turn to your wives this morning and say, honey, you look good. Oh, I can see those who had fights this morning. <laughs> this is your chance to make it up. You look good. You look beautiful. There is nothing wrong with looking presentable. Have a look at verse 22. She makes her own bed coverings. Her, her, uh, her clothing is of fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in, at the city gates where he sits among the elders. It goes on, she makes and sells garments. She delivers belts to the merchants, etc., etc., etc. And looks at this image of this woman who is presentable for the sake of her home. She represents her home. And so ladies, look presentable, look beautiful, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a reflection of, of who you are and who God has created you to be. Be presentable. But I think we must also realize that uh, there must be a sense of, of modesty that comes with us. And uh, the New Testament speaks about modesty in other areas as well. And we need to be cautious uh, that we, we don't flaunt what we have in a way that, that it doesn't honor the Lord as well. The last point this morning is words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. And, uh, and what a beautiful passage this is because we see over here that, that so many of us can have problems with what we say. And our words reflect our hearts very often. So we say things and you can't say, I take it back. I didn't mean it because you said it, okay? It came from somewhere and that is your heart. The book of James addresses this issue of speech. Other texts in the Bible do too. And so when women speak, they have to speak words of, of wisdom and, and beauty that come with us over here. And that is what this text it, it, it just illuminates for us over here. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and loving instruction is in her tongue. Note, loving instruction. Too many of us can utter words in harshness that draw people uh, not into a, a sense of loving appreciation, but a sense of isolation. And so ladies and, and gentlemen, when we say things that, that need to be said, but in a way that shouldn't have been said, we need to ask for forgiveness quickly. But a woman that the book of Proverbs commends is one who, who speaks with wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. How am I doing on time here? Am I doing right this morning? Praise the Lord. Verse 25 speaks very simply of the rewards of a woman who lives her life like this. And of course, at the end of the text speaks about that quite clearly. Verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. And all of us can say amen to that. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting. That doesn't make up the sum total of who you are. But here is the crux of the matter. A woman who fears the Lord will be praised. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Woman, your role is to fear the Lord. Your role is to understand the Lord, to appreciate God and all of His beauty because all of who you are comes from Him. <coughs> you are God's gift to us as helpers in creation. But you reflect the image and beauty of who God is Himself. You are made in His likeness and in His image. And you are to fear the Lord. And as a result of fearing the Lord, you will be praised. You will be exalted. You will be lifted high by God Himself. And so you will have a reward for being this excellent woman. And so what are some of these rewards that we see in this text? Have a look at verse 25. Strength and honor will be her clothing. When you, when you are this, this wife, and sometimes it seems like a tall order, can we ever manage this? Can we live like this? I mean, can we be gracious? Can we be compassionate? And there are times when we find ourselves not being those kinds of people. But come back to the reward, strength and honor of her clothing. 
Verse 28, her sons rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. An award, a reward of, of, of this kind of woman is, is the legacy she leaves for her family. I never forget my grandmother. Uh, my, my mother, uh, my grandmother was a very, very special person to me. And uh, she was a believer. She went to a Methodist church. And uh, I just absolutely <coughs> loved all that she was. She was this big old granny. And you could just get lost in her hugs. And uh, she had such words of wisdom uh, that she would often give to me. And I so appreciated her for who she was. And, and I still, to this day, remember things she said to me, conversations we had together. Uh, and, and this comes up so often in my mind over here. She has left a legacy which has influenced and impacted my life. And that legacy is also influencing and impacting my, life, my children's lives at the same time. And so in heaven she is being praised because of what she has instilled that has been carried on throughout the generations. Her sons will rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Men, I want to speak to you here as well this morning. It's not all about women. These women don't feel picked on. It's not a servant. Ladies, you need to live up to the standard. And you need to come on, get yourself sorted out. You know, don't sort yourselves out. You know, you're going to find yourselves without a place to sleep tonight. This is not what this is about at all. This is about the standard that God sets in His word for, for ladies. But have a look at the standard for men over here. Men, husbands, also praise her. Three times in this text it speaks about husbands commending their wives. And far too often I see the exact, exact opposite in the lives of husbands. We don't commend our wives and say, well done, you did a good job. Well done, you know, you, you look pretty today. I mean, Laura often asks me in the morning, how do I look? And I sort of like roll over, look okay. No, I should, I should be far more proactive and I should actually look up before I say you look okay. And I should look and say, wow, you look beautiful today. I love what you've done with your hair. And not just say, sure, well, do those colors match? <laughs> Are you really sure you want to wear those earrings today? Boy, I don't know if they suit your face. <laughs> I don't say that to my wife, let's just clear that one. <laughs> Husbands, our role is to praise and give words of affirmation. Now, I know for some men it's very hard to do. For some men it's hard to say, you look good. But you need to muster up all the courage and all of whatever you have inside of you and practice it in front of the mirror ten times if you need to, but say something that affirms your woman when she does something right. That is a large part to play. Because if our, if our wives aren't feeling a sense of appreciation, and love, they're never ever going to want to do anything because you never appreciate it. You never say, well done, you never, you never even like what I do. So why should I do anything at all? And so this is a both and situation over here. Be cautious of this. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. So you can even read the Bible to your wife and say, I know many capable women, but you are most of the board. Gents, 10 brownie points right there. Fantastic. You've quoted scripture and you've said something that's affirming. That's absolutely incredible over here. A woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise, uh, praise her at the city gates. I'm so grateful to the Lord this morning for the woman that He has placed uh, in our lives. Men, whether we like it or not, we would be incomplete without the women that are of our sides. Ladies, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, spiritual mothers, never underplay the role you play, or underestimate the role you play in the lives of people around you. A number of years ago, Florida Baptist, uh, a lady by the name of Grace Jacobs, said to me, she was my Sunday school teacher, said to me, Desmond, one day you are going to be a pastor. And I laughed at her. I laughed at her because I thought, you're out of your mind. A pastor? I like of a church. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And if you knew me then, I was very different. Thankfully, I'm different now. But it took someone just to say that to me. And I can name 
had this woman, Miss Irish, in grade, grade three. I was expelled from Arthur Method School, believe it or not. And then I was sent to Princess Primary School. And a teacher, first year of teaching, Miss Irish, took me, this delinquent child, and turned me around in a year. In fact, she did such a great job in primary school, I became the head boy of the primary school that I attended because of the role of this woman teacher. The role that you can play in the lives of the men and people around you is one that can impact lives for years and years to come. Don't allow the world to the standard of this world to dictate the standards of how you and I are to live. Allow God's word and, and this particular problem to speak to you today. That you would be this capable wife and woman that is precious, more precious than jewels in the eyes of our God. Let's pray this morning. Father, we're so grateful for the woman in our lives and we thank you particularly for, for mothers today. And has been, as has been prayed already, we are grateful and thankful for the role that they exercise in our life, for their instruction, for their discipline. And we ask God that, that we would be able to live up to the standards that we find in your word. Standards which are, are high by any human measure. But we know, Lord, that we don't do it alone. We're filled with your spirit and able to do above and beyond all that we hope, think, or can imagine. Because you're at work in us. Father, perhaps... This morning there are women here who feel like they've just failed in life. Perhaps they feel that they failed their husbands, they've failed in all kinds of sectors. I pray especially, Lord, that you draw alongside them <coughs> and that you'd fill them with your spirit and your presence and that you would allow them to feel affirmed and loved. And for those, Lord, who have, have sought to do things that are, are not perhaps the right way of doing who have used their beauty to deceive, <coughs> who have said things that they shouldn't have said to get things done that they wanted to get done. Lord, may you fill them with your fear, godly fear. And Lord, may they be known as women who fear you. So we have an opportunity this morning again today to embrace your word and embrace your truth and to live it out in our lives for the same. So Lord, I pray for the woman in our church. It's very difficult to be this godly woman today. S strong, valiant, fearful of the Lord. And so I ask God that you would give to them special grace. So that Lord, we would see as this text describes that their sons and their daughters will rise up and praise you. That Lord, people will be talking about them in the city gates. That in the business field, Lord, People will even be aware of the beauty and the industry of our lives at home. I just pray, Father God, for the, the sanctity of marriage. And that, Lord, you would, you would be with those in our congregation who are going through tough times. And that you would remind them that you are in control of all things. And that you love without measure. So be with us as we celebrate this day today. O oh God. Thank you for all that you've provided for us. Now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.